For obviously, like a certain distance, we can't hear anything anymore. Oh, sorry, hold on. Here's oh, the. Oh, the we can do the microphone. Sure. It, it's like a wand. Pass it to your next person. Okay, we'll get so that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm Luke. I have a like back end web and uh, data engineering kind of background and trying to get it like a machine learning engineer position or something similar from there right now. Uh, originally from Pennsylvania. Now are you in the city or you're in East Bay? Where you at? I've uh, lived, yeah, I've lived in the city. I've lived right up in Selma. I've been there for like, well, so been in the city long. for 10 years, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have home now with my current car. Sure. There you go. Hi, I'm, I'm Daniel. I work in uh, you know, back-end software stuff uh, for an ed tech company, so I'm interested in AI kind of from that perspective. Oh yeah, we can. Yeah. Do something or no, 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 no. It's, it's... Oh, for sure. Um, how big is our audience today? So we have um, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. Yeah, we can just. Sorry, we have nine people in the room, and like, like your name, guys. sure, there's nine people in the room, and there's like five people in the in the in, online. <laughs> what is up, Zoomer Nation? This is Tilde from South Bay, San Jose, and I am Assistant Regional Manager of Vibes Management, and I'm here to learn. Um, okay, is, does anyone want to uh, introduce themselves online? <laughs> Bunch of workers online, cowards, they won't introduce themselves. It's all good if, yeah, it's all good if you want to, yeah. We can hear you. Um, no, it's, uh, it, it, it is perfectly okay if you don't want to introduce yourself. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, is that? Hello, Jim, is that? Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the scientific method. Um, I can see you soon. Hi, Cloud. Can you hear me all right? Hey, hey girl. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, it's not show up. I know. You got to gotta, gotta, gotta come through. Come through. Okay. There's, a, there's a comedian guy that was like showing up at the AF and I don't know if he ever came back. I'm not sure who you're talking about, but I know if I see him, I'll see him. Well, I guess I'm from Canada. Okay. All right. Uh, is anyone else online? Yes. Yeah, we're yeah, hold your peace. Is that fun? Well, I am Sandy. I'm in our own class before. I'm interested in our own school. Wanted to learn more. Um, yeah. yeah. Sandy, where are you from? Are you from well, I'm, I'm in Oakland. From, okay, um, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I want to have that human connection, yeah. right? Despite, you know, you all right, all right, all right, all right, Oh, thank you for showing the Discord for people. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, the presentation I want to, the thing I want to talk about today is Visual Cortex 1, uh, which is a paper um, which combines, it's, it's both a model and a kind of a state-of-the-art study from Meta. 
Um, if you want to, actually, I'm going to be switching between a lot of things a lot. I was just playing. But yeah, if you want to see the the paper, there is a paper here. Um, so yeah, the, there is uh, basically um, yeah, it's a paper, but for those who are not uh, those who aren't aware of it, um, essentially the we yeah Meta has been conducting research um, on a field called embodied intelligence um, or body artificial intelligence, uh, which is what the EAI, EAI prefix is here, um, and they created a um, amalgamation of or they did a study of the state of the art in several um, reinforcement learning tasks uh, and created their own, from there, created their own bench, benchmark for uh, general embodied intelligence. Uh, and they specifically focused on what they called free trade visual representations, uh, which haven't been previously, which previously have not formed like, super well, um, although they generalized reasonably they don't they haven't performed reasonably well um, but they uh, decided to use visual cortex one uh, which performed a lot better uh, and close to state of the art in several of these tasks um, and the one of the key features uh, in addition to using like a, a visual transporter model was the inclusion of the mass autoencoder uh, so for those who aren't familiar with some of these terms, we'll get into that. Um, but essentially, essentially, like it's a robotic. Essentially, it's using a visual representation for robotics. So, not OBS. Uh, Yeah, so as some background, um, embodied AI is um, from, so this is actually a, apparently a research for those who are Canadian. There's an embodied AI workshop that's happening. Um, and their quote from them is that the goal of embodied artificial intelligence is to create agents such as robots, which learn to creatively solve challenging tasks requiring interaction with the environment. Um, basically, a lot of things, a lot of the like really popular AIs do, um, a lot of the AIs do these really have work, like have a really good understanding of like abstract things like language and, and vision. Um, but it's very hard to get that, to convert that understanding to real life tasks. Like how, how do you take, right? It can, it can tell you like what it, what you mean, like it can tell you how to, answer a question or like you answer if you give it a question it can tell you how to answer that question but uh, like say if you say how do i get to this this certain different place how do i get to the store it can tell you how to get to that store but how do you actually incorporate it into a robot that drives you to the store um yeah and what actually paul me um was a thing we did a uh, thing we covered uh so there's we actually covered a AI task called in Palm E, which focused more on language models and creating a an embodied language model. Um, this one will be this particular one is actually so while that one is focused on language and and vision tasks, this one will be focused on image and video. Uh, So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, we can do that. Um, yeah, so right now I'm trying to record. I think I'm trying to record, but uh, recording plus, uh, yeah, this is like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. The other thing I wanted to get to as background is the idea of pre trained visual representations. Um, so that's the 
core of lie. So when you hear like visual cortex, like they're talking about this visual understanding of the brain, right? We we see things and then we can understand. Um, we understand that like, oh, this is a wall or like these are tables and this is a chair. Like we can understand. We we have like references whenever we look at an environment. Um, and so PVR takes advantage of that concept, right? By saying that while the actual tasks may be different um, for different uh, for different models, or the tasks may be different for different environments, but some concepts, some concepts, especially in the visual world um, and in robotics environments, tend to generalize across. Like there are certain things you can infer from visual tasks. Um, so that's what PVR, the concept of PVR does. You, you take you take visual data and you learn to infer things from that. Um, and that inference, um, you, you train, easily train on environments and different models. Um, or like new for like robotics tasks. Yeah. Is that what that graphic is also saying or is that? Yeah, that's this graphic. So like it's saying, oh, this PVR is training on a visual, this is training a vision model, right? And you do some, you do some pre-training on a vision model. So, and then that vision model, you can then take data from the environment, put it through the vision model, and then take the output of that vision model to, into the control policy. So we're, we're like, control policy is like the thing that takes an input and outputs a set of actions. Uh, so this is this policy is like the agent that that interacts with the environment. So instead of just training, getting like instead of getting at the raw image input and then outputting and then like working with the environment, you instead have put it through a vision model that's been pre-trained on various data sets, and then then it's fed into a, a more dense format into this policy, uh, and that outputs an action. On the Tabula Rasa ones, can we do this? Like, what what systems learn from scratch? Image models. Uh, I mean, like, if you look at the Hugging Face tutorial, that's like Tabula Rasa is like kind of like the traditional way that reinforcement learning has been done. Like, it's kind of like if you've seen, uh, if you did a, like the reinforcement learning stuff, it's just you learn in R like an agent you're learning the Atari space. Yeah, you're like you're like taking an, an image from Atari. You put it through a CNN, and then you output like a model that takes in an image and outputs an output. Whereas this thing, this vision model, like yes, even for for things with visual observations, you are using a like a CNN model or using a visual model, but this is just like doing the heavy lifting of like understanding the visual world for you. So it's like, yeah. Of interpreting the visual world for you, and then that the, that those interpretations are just fed directly into it. So the policy is just done like from the interpretations, and not like the the uh, visual input. Um. So this is a little bit. So yeah, they. Um. I actually think this should be after studies, but yeah, this is, um, the. Cortex bench is what the I guess they what they created. Uh, so like this this is the benchmark that they created that that Meta created as like it's like so they semi officially made took a bunch of these tasks or a bunch of like disparate tasks um, each with their own gyms and turned it into like a a generalized benchmark. So this is a lot of the all of these are robotics related. So this is. Um, some of these are have to do with robotic manipulation. So, like try finger and the droid are like your robot hand. Let's try and like pick something or move something and push something. Um, DM control is like you are trying to control a lot of. If you've seen like the like the spider task where like you you train a spider to walk, uh, like it's essentially a more complicated version of that. 
or a more complex version of that where you get something to stand up and walk or like this this man configured to stand up and walk uh the and then finally we have oh thank you and finally we have uh the navigation task image nav and object nav and this revolves around finding something in an indoor environment um so you have a three called habitat um called habit that I also made and the goal is to navigate through it's like it's usually like a house to an indoor environment um image nav is like here's the picture of the place i want you to be uh, go navigate until you find that to find that picture or like until you see that picture um, object nav is like i want is like specifying the goal as as a language or like through a prompt so i want you to see i want you to go to a sofa and so this object nav is trying to go through rooms until it finds a sofa is it like graph thing you're drawing that the actual results yeah so this is the results of uh yeah so it's yeah they, there's a call there's another one too with this but yeah it's like a little radar map it's like it's like video game stats, which is pretty cool. What did DM stand for? Um, so DM is uh or uh it is good question. Um, but DM is but yeah, this is it's a uh, yeah this the. Well, alert that those those were the performance results of so that radar map was the performance results of each of the yeah. So this is from this is a series of control environments from DeepMind. So DM is DeepMind. Um, and Meta is the Facebook arm regulation. DeepMind is a company. Uh, it's it's a it's an AI company, so uh, they they released so DeepMind is they released a one of they do several things uh, with like AlphaGo and stuff like that. But this is like their some of their more like robotics oriented. They did some of their more like well, this is like their more robotics oriented simulations. Yeah, so many ways. Uh, So yeah, the um, the next thing is um, how do they what data do they get? Um, so we have they decided to train it on several videos. Um, so I can name the specific videos. Uh, I can get I'll list the specific videos like after um, after the presentation. But essentially, um, they did had several layers they decided to look at data set size and diversity um, so their original base data set is just a series of uh, home and transportation activities done from first person point of view um, or like centered on a, a single person doing something uh, or a single agent doing something um, then they added several data sets. So that was the original data set. Then they added, uh, they experimented with adding a set of robotic manipulation. So just like a robot arm doing something. Um, another one for like to navigating through a house, like videos of, of navigating through a house. So like this is essentially like real estate, like a real estate virtual tour um, as a data set. And then Combining the two, and then finally, like adding all of those, and then just ImageNet, which is just like stock images, or like just stock images to train on. So it just has like because these are like very specific things. Uh, these are very specific to like navigate through a house or like navigation things. They decided to give it ImageNet as like like style, like broad generic images to add um, to the data set. So you start with about 2.7 million frames or 2.8 million frames with Ego 4D, about like 800,000 give or take 
with manipulation, same for navigation. Um, and then you have ImageNet, which is uh, 1.3 million images. So very large um, data sets. And these are kind of the performances of uh, I guess the, the visual performances of the of BIT, which is just a, a like transformer or like a vision model on some of these. Um, so yeah, it, it obviously like diversifying the data set does allow some improvement. Um, it does taper off, you know, after a, for some things in a little bit. Um, but yeah, as as can, as can be shown here, um, as diverse data sets perform better, um, just in general. <laughs> Yeah. Here? Uh, now this. It's like on the right there in domain data, driving this vision model. Is it kind of uh, the, I guess I was thinking that each task will be traced separately on the different data sets, but it sounds like they are combining them to make sure. Yeah, so um, this is actually trained on like, so these are, are, these are just their own self contained reinforcement learning, like open AI gyms. Uh, which have data in them. Um, these are actually just trained on like several like random, just like various data sets. So these, the data set for Ego 4D um, are, from what I understand, like completely separate from these like specific tasks. So it's just like, just throwing a bunch of like videos of related, it's like, it, uh, it is like indoor navigation, so they, they have it like driving through a home or like robotics, or, like a robotic arm. Like they do the general task of it, but they don't actually give it data from like doing the open AI chip. So, like, what, this is why they call it out of domain data because it's, it is, it, yeah. You could specify like in a broader sense of the word domain. Yes, they, they are giving it like robotic manipulation. They're doing house tours and stuff like that. Like it's related to the task that they're testing it on, but it's not the exact same data. Whereas this, this usually is like, this model is just training on like the exact data from that chip. So like you're, you're actually from the environment. So like you're given, like for example, like for this, you would, you would be giving it data from attempts from it attempting to do this trifinger environment, like specifically this trifinger environment. And it would train on data from that. Um, whereas this one is just training on robot data. Like this is just training on robot data. And then it has an understanding of like, oh, this is like, here's a condensed version of like, Here's like a condensed understanding of the robot data. Yeah. And then that is passed into the policy. That makes sense. Yeah. Just tasks for helping each other out a little bit. That makes sense. Yeah, or it's 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 just trained on like videos. It's like trained on like raw videos. Um in like just like separate data that's related to what they're trying to do. But it's not exactly what it's trying to like. It's not. It's not. It, they're they're trying to distinguish between like actually going into the environment and like training on direct data from the environment and just training on videos and data sets that are related to what the task is. So it's like YouTube videos. It's like okay. It's like obviously we're not going to give you exact task word for word, but we're going to give you future practice tasks and you train on that. But uh, obviously we're not going to give you all the specific word for word because that. Yeah, yeah, you're, 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 yeah, you're given practice. Yeah, you're, you're giving, you're giving this. It's giving this as like practice and kind of an understanding. Um, it's not actually practicing on the task. It's just kind of, it's kind of like watching a bunch of things and then when doing the test, you you can recall like what you watched and like, and like recall. You can use, you, yeah, you can recall different things um, from what you've watched and what you've learned from that. Like if someone went to school and like, okay, they got to complete this final task, the 
it's like, yeah, you get the mock-ups, you get all this training stuff, but uh, you don't get, uh, you obviously don't get that thing. But I think you call it a big everything you need to see, right? But they're obviously not going to give you the best word for it. Is that fair to say as far as trying to make an analogy or not? Just kind of going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, and that's the other thing. The flag is so much that it's like that I can hear the questions that's kind of coming through. Oh, yeah, the gate is going down. We got a lot of cross off. Not sure, we got to pass the mic around. Um, yeah, um, this was uh, Tilde again from South Bay San Jose, and um, I use metaphors and analogies to keep up with all this high minded stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, it was a school. I tried to make a school analogy to learn what was going on here as far as how this thing learns. So, uh, yeah, that was that whole thing. Thank you for speaking up, for sure. Feel, always feel, feel like you can speak up and participate. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, so, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, so that's, that's how they're experimenting with, with data set size. Uh, yeah, and, and the idea is to, like, get a general understanding. So, that's, this is, like, the, more or less the idea behind Pre, like pre-trained visual representation, like oh, here's here's the effects of like studying on different data sets um, in the performance of that. Um, so, can I ask something? Uh, so, like from what I understand so far, it was um, like traditionally, you usually you're supposed to have like a bit of a 3D scan of an entire room before you can get a robot to navigate around it, right? So then, what I understood was like kind of the robot. Is it was kind of update what's going on every single time. It's like inputting a lot more information than traditional means. Yeah. Um, the yeah. So this um, to put it at the high level, what this what this thing does is it learns. It first does a bunch of videos. It it goes through a bunch of videos of of indoor environments. It learns what certain features like it kind of like understands the con think of it as like understanding the concept of walls understanding the concept of shelving and, and tables and stuff like that um and it then yeah it understands the concept of shelving and tables um and gets and yeah it has it understands like how certain things interact with each other in, in the environment in a real in a like indoor environment then it's exposed <laughs> like, if i just kind of got this in like my brain and start moving things around the robot would be able to kind of problem solve its way out yeah it would it yeah it understands it like understands core concepts um of what a, of what's inside a room um and then it, when then it can better use that when navigating an indoor environment, when navigating a novel or like a new indoor environment, um, it can just it can pick up. It may not have like a explicit 3D model of the room, but it can learn how to navigate a room because it has it's been given like the core uh, a core understanding of like components of what you can find inside a room. So it, because of that, it can navigate a room more easily. Yeah, are you? I think like it's so far advanced. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, the last topic was uh, yeah. something about turning down videos like recently. Yeah. So, was just like, okay. yeah. So the question, um, so the question that was asked by Ari was, um, is like mine RL does a bunch of training on a does a bunch of training from videos and then uses that to um, also uses that to perform well on Minecraft tasks. Uh, what is the difference between what's being presented here and mine RL? And I went back to this slide because this is, I think mine RL is actually a complicated representation of Tableau Rasa training. So it's being trained 
So it's trained on this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I still, yeah, I, so like, I, I, I wasn't aware that mine RL is different than, um, that there is something that, that the video free training is different than just mine RL uh, in itself. Um, I still would say that it's, it's still like this first concept. So like the idea here is you can train something to be really good at Minecraft, but if you tried to play it, if you had it play another game, it probably would be lost. It would probably would be like not very good at that game. So it's trained specifically on Minecraft, even if it was like other people playing Minecraft or other instances of Minecraft, it's still, it's still like seeing it's still learning from Minecraft data to play Minecraft. This one's trying to learn from, it's like the equivalent of learning to play, um, it's like learning to play Minecraft from videos of sandbox games. Like if you watch a bunch of videos on sandbox games and then learning like, and then like trying to relate like, oh, this is like you, the idea is this is like, whatever this box like when you use to crafts like most sandbox games have like a crafting area or like what are the materials like learning that there should be like different materials that are different value like, learning that like in a lot of things iron is like valuable in a lot of crafting uh like sandbox stuff. i'm not i'm not too familiar with sandbox games but like learning having a vision model interpret like common sandbox tropes and then applying those to Minecraft. Yeah, exactly. It's a low order level of information. Uh, it's it's a vision model to to dissect like low order information from uh, image from like images and videos. Yeah, so yeah, the data itself is like, yeah, it's only trained on like POV videos or like what they call egocentric, which I mean, either it either is like first person or like, uh, yeah, it could be, it, or yeah, or a simulated environment, but I actually don't know. I have to look at the, the, well, like, the uh, like the examples of those three, like that data set would be all like, simulated, right? I think if you go back to the, the like the DM. Uh, controller, the DM control. That's all. Oh no, no, it doesn't actually. So that's the that's the thing. It doesn't use data from these environments. It uses train. It, it like the vision model. Literally in real life. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or I I'll get back to you. I don't I don't want to say that there are, there are several data sets. I I didn't have the time to look through all of them. Um, that were mentioned, so there were probably like seven or eight data sets. Oh, like it's just more data, right? Yeah, it, I don't know whether or not it was simulated or not, but it was it was outside of like these specific tasks. It was not it was not any data generated by um, it was not any generate it was not any data generated by these tasks. It was just data generated. It was they were just like data on yeah robotics and indoor navigation. Um, in, in a simulated version of a, of, of these, and it's not in, in, in simulated, so it does, um, train on all of these tasks. Um, it depends like Minecraft, right? It's egocentric. It's, like, it depends. I, yeah, I don't know how, it, it is true. They, they, they are cheating a little, they are cheating a little bit and they're just like, instead of one task, they're generalizing across, um, they're generalizing across like multiple tasks, but still in robotics. Um, 
but I think the idea is, is still that you're training like a vision model. I still think the idea could still apply to video games, especially like visual, um, visual navigation video games where you can like understand. I think it's still very applicable in that you could, you could have a, a visual representation or have these PVR, have a PVR, like understand what trees, like what minerals are. Like there's a, there's a way to like understand visual elements of a game um, before even it going into Minecraft. And I think that would, it would still be, I don't, I don't think this model, this particular model might help. Um, I don't know how like discerning it would be. This model would be in, in like different Minecraft and like late in helping him train a Minecraft model. But I think the the intuition could still be helpful, um, or like the idea of a a PVR would still be helpful with games so, with like navigation so games. The one that already what? What? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I heard PVR and I don't know what that means. Um. Uh, pre-trained visual representation. So, like, yeah. So the idea of like learning a a what a low-level information, um, like low-level information from uh, an image. So kind of like do um when sorry, like if someone's asking a question like twenty buttons, what does it do? Would like get a constantly changing environment? Like to say, we were just kind of like moving stuff all the time, doing just constantly able to update itself. That's how it dances fine. Yeah, I think more in terms of in terms of advancement, in terms of like constantly changing environment, I think it's more it's more like understanding. I think I think a lot of things are designed uh, in like. It's more understanding visual. It's more like splitting. A lot of times, visual tasks split the split the concept of like visual, like understanding visual cues in in the environment and performing actions on the environment. Um, and traditionally, RL um, has done tried to do both, uh, like understanding visual components and or the action, so it was just like a single model. Whereas they're trying to split off like visual understanding, like understanding visual cues in the environment, and then forming the actions. So the idea is like it can form. Um, the idea is it can it can perform visually. Yeah, it can like extend itself across because because it did some training on visual on like different like videos and stuff. Uh, it can better understand and train, or like it can understand and train on these other data sets uh, without like needing to hard, without needing to like explicitly uh, focus on one or explicitly like focus on one thing uh, or explicitly like specialize in one task. Um, let's assume, assume that the, the task at hand is, for example, passing the first stage of uh, for, first stage of Mario, for example. Right. Yeah. How much faster does uh, an AI learn how to beat the game without the free? Right. Um, yeah. So I think that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of the key, like a key thing to note. So how much faster does it train? Um, or how much faster does it train with one of does it train one of these environments um, with a, with PVR? Um, I would say that I think like performance and training is not like like sheer performance is not the main goal of this of this task um, or like was not the main goal of this paper. The main goal is like as you can see like some of these like for example image nav and object nav. Um, it doesn't actually beat state of the art in some of these. So the goal going to be like a foundation. Yeah, the goal is that it, it can just have a general understanding, like it has a general understanding of robotics tasks. So we were talking about like general embodied AI. It has like 
has such an understanding that it can do all of these tasks reasonably, like at a pretty and do a uh, like a reasonably high performance on each of these tasks. Foundation model. Yeah. Like massive data, uh, massive data uh, uh, training uh, across a lot of domains, and then like using one domain to actually uh, kind of use it efficiently. And you were saying something about POV videos, and when you say that, do you mean like first person like body cam stuff, where it's like, sorry, sorry, was that too off topic? Yeah, yeah, we, we can, I, I think, yeah, with, with POV, we just mean like, like, like a, a pretty single like video from a person like doing a task instead of just like a bunch of people in the scene. Um, like instead of like a, like a lot of, like instead of like a still vid, it's like focused on a single person doing something is what egocentric I think well, means. Okay, so focus on um, Okay, that's, that's the third person, not the first person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That helped really understand. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, so yeah, I wanted to go into the um, full. So this is the full um, visual cortex model. Um, so it does. So yeah, what what you see here is um, some of the input data sets. So yeah, here you see like a first person POV model. It's hard. Yeah, it's a little bit. A little bit, the data set is a little bit smaller, like the data size, but you see there's like, um, whoop. I don't know if you can actually zoom on this. Um, yeah, I think it's working out, guys. It's okay, it's full screen. Describe it further. Yeah, it's a photo of, essentially, there's the video 4D, which is a photo of, of like a person manipulating, like working on something. And then there is real estate 10K, which is just like like tours through homes. It looks like that's actually so. Like correction, I think that actually is simulated. Um, I look at the data here, but I think it's this. It is. It is. It's a separate data set entirely, but it is a like virtual. This is like a virtual. Looks to be like a virtual uh, house. Um, we can try and see what it looks like. The Minecraft data set. granularity I can see here um, it does look like it does look like from here that it's it's it looks virtual so this does look simulated to me but the idea is still the same that you're you're training on like a, a broad variety creating a foundational model which is like as so what, what we're talking about is that it's creating a foundational model uh, a foundational visual model which then you can use as like uh, which you can use as like an aid to reinforce the learning on tasks, on visual, a task with visual input. So you have a bunch of data with images. You then train, like, they give you different methods, like R3M and MAE. So I'll go over MAE. These are essentially like visual, like training, like um, essentially self, like self-supervised training. So training how to like reconstruct um, how to training to reconstruct um, parts of this image, um, and then you get a vision model, uh, which can take these and then encode it into something um, like into like a seven hundred 
uh, into a, like a 700 feature, like a 700 feature vector. Um, so then you, so you take this, you encode, so you by through visual representation learning, um, you can take this and you can encode it into something usable. Uh, you you can encode it into something easier to train. And then what you do is you train either through um, for some of the models like object nav and adroit, they do behavior cloning um, or RL policy. It like depends, but this is essentially like a small RL uh, layer, like a PPO, um, which is trained on these tasks. Um, given it's, but instead of given this 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 like image as input, it gives it's given like the encoded form from this visual model. So it gets an encoding from the visual model, and then it, it trains on that instead of just training on this raw image. And then you get evaluation, and then you evaluate on that. So yeah, actually, um, thank you for calling it a foundation for bringing to mind the foundational model because um, that's actually what they, they actually compare different foundational models here. Um, so this is like a very like weird but also kind of interesting graph. Um, this is a, this is basically a 2D histogram. So this is where um, this is how many this is like the rank number it performs compared to the rest of these, and then each of these ticks is like how well, how many times it performed at that rank. So like just like how well it performed compared to the others. So in this set of like eight, place, yeah, eight, first place, second place, like literal, just like place, how well it placed. Um, so as you see here, um, VITL is they train, they use MVP. Um, as you can see here, they performed overall the best. It has all, it's all like VITL, which is like a, a visual, a visual model. So it's done, it's, it's a based on a visual model. This model MVP does like better. It in almost all of its ta it performed in the top four against all of these in almost every task, um, and it had three number one performances. So overall, this was like the best. Some of it, R3M performed better on some of them, but MVP performed the best uh, overall. Does it does, does does it make does this make actually does this make sense does this like graph it it took me a little bit to understand it. Those uh, vertical lines being on the, on the horizontal. Yeah, line. so if if you're familiar with how a histogram works, instead of a bar where it like where it's like the number of occurrences of something is how high the bar is, they just put the number of ticks or how often something occurs. So this is so this is three ticks. So therefore MVP uh, performed first place. Three times. Yes. Yeah. yeah, versus these other uh, these other foundation models. These are all different versions uh, of yes. this paper, right? These are all so um, as as Jam said or Jeremy said, we we trained a foundational model, which is like a a model which is supposed to like have a general understanding, which generally like abstracts, um, ex like extracts data from uh, visual inputs, but uh, from different environments. So they experiment with different. So we we talked about this like high level model, right? This like high level cortex, um, but there are different ways to to create that environment. So this is like. Uh, so they talk about some of these. So MVP is like image is max auto coding with the egocentric videos. Um, Clip is just like a training on like image text. So Clip is like image text. Um, R3M is time contrastive. So actually training on um, using like the, the time component, um, and then. Uh, yeah, VIP is like uh, pre-training. Yeah, so these are all like different ways to. Uh, they they tried like different visual models to create their like foundational model. 
So it's like this is the first. This is the first. Yeah, go to that graph. Level. Yeah. So this is the vision model. So they're trying to train this thing here. This vision model. They they fully train something using another foundational image system and then run it through the whole loop to see if it works. Yeah, they run it through. They run it through like the training loop and all of that, and saw its performance performance. And so, so this one performed the this MVP. Um, so they butted, they pitted. It's it would be a long. Yeah, I can. Um, basically, like in short, these are all like the things in parentheses are what they call backbones or like visual, like the visual model um, that's at the core of this. Um, and then these are all like the training methods they came up with. Uh, so like there's MVP, R3 input, then a VIP, random fine tune, stuff like that. Um, so like not, so these are all are like, so the, the random is just like not doing anything to, not doing any like performance, not doing any tuning, or like not, these are like not doing any tuning, this is like fine tuning. Um, like on specific data, uh, but yeah, these are all like trained. These are all like visual elements, but retrained on different, um, but like retrained on the new data set that we were talking about before. Uh, and yeah, they kind of just like pitted a bunch of models against each other. Um, and this is like a result of who like performed the best. So R3M, MVP have the highest number of like number one ranked performances, um, and MVP overall has the highest like overall like oh, has the highest ranks in everything. Um, so like every all of its performances were in the top four uh, for all of the, um, for all the tasks. Is the idea that I'm sorry we talked about this like that each task essentially needs like a vector representation of video or image somehow, and this is like bunch of different ways of getting that. Yeah, this is yeah, it needs like uh, a condensed like information um, on it. And that's how it how it got and it gets it and this is yeah, these are all the models that these all of these models what they aim to do is get a information, like a dense information uh, from the visual from like a image input. It's image to vector. It's like, yeah, image to vector. Like, and then and then all the other downstream tasks are like vectored a robot thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's just like your standard RL or they, they talk about it's like a PPO and like they do stuff on the policy, but yeah, it's like a reinforcement learning as is. Yeah. But the image representation is frozen, right? It's, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's after, frozen. After, after you choose the best one after this right? Yeah, it's, it's like MVP and now it's frozen. Yeah. Oh this is for So yeah, retraining oh. stuff is like okay, let's determine which model is the best, which is MVP apparently. Okay, take that one, freeze it. Now use that in the actual, like in that first graph where it shows the right part, or no, where it says the frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so, so like we should just use MVP for everything in general? Because yeah, so like when they when they give you the encoding, like VC1 is based on, it's, but they, the code inflation is based on the MVP, the ITL. I thought what they were saying with this is like it depends on the task. I think they said like some of them perform better on like obviously some of them perform well like R three perform well on some tasks. But I think they meant I think what they say is like this performs. They they you generally go with this one because it performs the best on like the broadest on like the, on on average it performs the best. My my reading of this MVP performs best on three of the tasks. No no no, it's it's got the first rank. Three times. Yeah, the second rank. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so if you can only, if you have to choose, it's, it's, it's the top yeah. one and the top four. It's maximally the top one on and three top things. things, and minimally the, the top four. So if you're stuck with using only one model, you use the one. Yeah. So use MVP. Now go to the like actual. Um, and just to go further into what MVP does, um, so MVP, a lot of the, um, most, uh, it most relies on what's called a masked autoencoder, 
and the idea is you like leave oh sorry i'll look at the chat first but the idea is you leave like certain bits out of the image um you encode those and then you try and decode um you try and decode as faithfully as possible um oh i see the visual with video bridge i think i i, I think it was <laughs> yeah um i think it was the one i saw um Oh yeah, thank you. I'll I'll show that video at the end, uh, Ari. But yeah, um, you're supposed to leave this in. So yeah, you you encode you you take the images that are left, you encode it, and then you like say that oh yeah, you need to fill this part in. You try and decode it into the original image. So you have uh, yeah, you encode you encode like this is like a partial image. And you're trying to like fill in the gaps, and by doing that, you learn about the structure of the input image. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So here you see like uh, a lot of this is the performance. So I guess this is all the performances of of different. Uh, Different training algorithms are the thing like what they call PVR, the pre-visual representation. So the different foundational models. This is how well like the visual cortex is done. It, um, as you can see, like the exception of R3M, as we said earlier, that R3M performed better on like, a couple of tasks, um, but it still performed better. It still outperforms most pre-existing pre-existing tasks, um, like on the general. So for these two, it outperforms, it performs close to or better than this task on every, on every, um, on every benchmark. And here it performs worse on a couple of them, but overall performs better since this one performs way, as you can see, it performs way worse on here on the habitat data set. So this one, this one performs better in certain ones, but it's overall heavily fine tuned. Um, yeah, and furthermore, as you can see, um, we can go back here. They actually compared it with state of the art, um, and it actually, with the exception of object and image now and Android, with the exception of these three, it actually performs better than the state of the art um, on several of these tasks. Uh, yeah, here's a graph. Here's some. Here's like a specific, um, like specific. Here's it like in numbers. So you see that, like an object, the image now, for instance, it's state of the art is around eighty-two percent, uh, and then BC one performs around seventy percent. So it performs even on the ones. Um, that it does worse on, quote unquote, it still does like close to state of the art. Um, it does still does close to state of the art with 57 instead of 70 percent. Um, and then a joint, and then for um, like Meta World, it actually like in DM Pixel, it actually does work better. Um, yeah, and that's just that's my presentation actually. Uh, what I, I'll go over, yeah, let's I can go over, I can look at this. Sorry, oh, this. Um, uh, trying to see what this. Yeah, does this, is this, so here's a video of this spot. Um, here's a video of this rope, of this robot that's performing various tasks called spot. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm not actually sure. So this could be, I'm not sure if any of these are part of meta, um, of metas. Of what these are actually one of the environments. Um, 
but yeah, this is showing like one particular environment. Oh, so yeah, so this is a particular real world environment. Um, more simulated. This is real. Oh. Um, so you can see. Oh, it's something that's simulated. Or is it just like really good? Yeah, sure. Which thing? Oh yeah. This thing. Okay, so I don't. So in the page for the paper, there's also this website linked. Um, there's there's a lot of different stuff linked to in the paper, like the model card, this like this uh, summary, the actual paper itself, and then there yeah. was this other link, uh, robots that learn from videos of human activities and simulated interactions, and basically it's covered what we've talked about so far that like they created an artificial uh, visual cortex, um, and then also created something called uh, a new approach called adaptive sensor-motor skill coordination, which achieves uh, near-perfect performance on the challenging task of robotic mobile manipulation in physical environments. So this was like the application, the application of VC1. Um, yeah, I see what you're talking about here. Okay, so, um, yeah, so essentially this, this website so this kind of, this actually answers your question. Okay. Um, I think you posed the question of like, oh, is this part of the VC1? So the question is, uh, this mentioned, this actually mentions a sec several toward the end or like here, yeah, no, no. It, where is that rethinking sense real? It should be. Yeah, my page that I have is different than your page. Yeah. I have no videos on my page. Oh, this is the blog, I think. Yeah. Um, I can't. Yeah, oh, here it is. Um, so there's, there's. you mentioned, you asked, like, what does this paragraph mean? A new approach called adaptive skill coordination, which achieves near perfect performance on the challenging task of robotic mobile manipulation. So um, we actually went over the first thing, which is the artificial visual cortex. They actually extended this to they actually extended this visual cortex um, into a real world robot. And that's what you see here um, is the, the end result of some of these things like indoor navigation, picking up stuff. Like this robot is like carrying that out in real life. Did they train it in this like these fake house environments? Yeah. So you trained it in like a visual house. So you have the simulation. So now instead of, so now instead of like trying to find just being like first person and trying to find it, now you have the robot. It's now you're like, oh, this is the first person camera, but you're from the perspective of this of spot robot. So you see this and you have like the, so now you're actually seeing the, the video from, so now it's like given that give this video, uh, so image ta image nav was just like going through an environment um, or like first person view from an environment. Now it's like first person view, but the robot is it's actually this robot that's doing it. And so now they say, okay, simulation, it's like walking through this. It's just like hovering through. It's like doing the simulation physics of just like stepping through in a virtual world to this robot is actually like trying to walk forward and, and backward and, and turn around through this world. The, the camera view is from the front of the robot, right? Yeah, it's from this, and this, this, uh, this yeah. the RL algorithm is from yeah. the camera at the top. Yeah. Even though all the video is shown third person. Yeah, it shows third person, but the camera is actually like, yeah, you, the depth camera here, you can Even see it's from. simulated, it's a third person kind of. It's simulated, yeah, for some reason they showed it as a simulator, as, as in like, I guess they're like, oh, this is what it would look like as a simulator. Oh, you can see it in the gripper. Yeah. In the gripper, yeah. So these are all from the gripper, yeah. Yeah, so this is like talking about, yeah, so this is talking about how they transferred their simulated data to the real world um, through this robot that can both navigate and walk through the environment and actually pick up stuff more successfully than before, right? Than other robots. Yeah, I mean, or like 98% success rate on 
like walking through and like picking up stuff. Yeah. It's like it does it does like walking through it picks up and like walks to another environment and puts it down. Yeah, it could be one of those plays. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so super yeah, so virtual cortex or object rearrangement integrated into a single system. Is it this thing about uh, adaptive skill coordination? It says, I think it's good here. Tackle long horizon tasks. We and our collaborators at Georgia Tech developed a new technique called adaptive skill coordination, which consists of three components a library of basic sensor motor skills. A skill coordination policy that chooses which skills are appropriate to use at which time. And a corrective policy that adapts trained skills when out of distribution states are perceived. I see. So it's kind of like Yeah, so the idea is like it's 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 doing like context switching between the idea is is like it's doing context switching between different tasks and then like between like turning and then it says, like, at a high level, when you say, like, move forward, what does that mean in terms of, like, the robot? So it's, like, translating moving forward into, like, specific robotic movements or, like, what, what that specific robot has to do to move forward. Well, back to Palmy Land, where we have, like, a big ass. I think. Communicating to its actuator. Like, its actuator. Yeah. I mean, I don't think. Like,. It, I don't think there's like this is pretty freaking I, I would say this is like very low level, um, much lower level than Palmy. Palmy kind of like takes a language and it has like high level tasks and then like it has the robot like carry out a specific task. But this is like the thing to go this this is like yeah, you have to do like context switching between different RL policies, but this is like as low I think this is as low level as you can realistically get as like the lowest level is like you move it like is telling the robot to move that's forward. Like, that's the yeah, task part. Yeah. Which is it takes the so call me the higher level is like planning at one hertz. And then the lower level RT one, which is it knows the actions that it can take, the skills it can do. Yeah. And then it translates that that one hertz skill to five hertz uh, like actions. It's more yeah. like RT one. And that it can yeah, I was. I don't know. It it seemed to me that this is more like real time. Like this is this is more than one hertz. Uh, yeah. Like from looking at it, uh, or like from like the data itself. It's like it's just it's just actuating. It's just like moving. You can't like you can't just like step forward. You can't just like have a thing that just pops forward one one like meter in the real life. In real life, so they have it. So it like instead of just popping forward one meter, it like walks one meter. Um, but in terms of like doing the unnecessary motor movements and stuff, it, it does that. Um, Is it about the mass auto encoder that R three M that allows it to learn lower level representations of physical reality and stuff? <laughs> Is there a like, simple ass way that you can describe that? Um, I don't know if we've ever went over auto. I, I guess we went over auto auto encoders before. Um, yeah, for a lot of different stuff. Frame day. Um, I think part of it might just be that they're using the ego data set, like not. It's the, they picked a good data set. Yeah. That. that yeah. Well, like where you're you're predicting squares, like you're you're masking squares out and predicting like what's yeah. there. And if you have like you know from an egocentric perspective, like project the floor a lot better, maybe in that model, and like a coffee cup, like a yeah, water, like better. That's what the fine tuning. That's what like the MVP over just like using a regular vision model. So like that's why it performs better. That's why when they talk about like. Uh, like when they talk about MAE over just like that's why like these like regular models perform so like perform poorly like that's why these perform better it's like it's fine tuning 
on these specific data. It's like taking the image data. Yeah, and what it's doing is what it's training on, what's fine tuning on is like it's encoding. You see, it's like I have a bigger image here. Um, but yeah, you're you're trying to you're like leaving a bunch of stuff, you're leaving some of the image out, and then you're telling it to reconstruct the image. And then by reconstructing the image, you have, it like infers, through reconstruction, it infers uh, like the structure of, it, re, it, re, it infers the structure of the image, or like cues of how the, what the image should look like, or like cues about certain structures from looking at only like chunks of the original data set. The, the, how they rank, the ranking view is kind of misleading because like, it's showing the ranking relative to other methods rather than like maybe how good all of them are. Like it's a very weird, it's like flying through statistics. It's like I'd rather see the performance measure and then I could be like, oh, like they're all the same essentially. Like the variance is like trivial. Oh, it doesn't yeah, matter. if you want, if, is it just like, you're talking about, do you want like it's numbers or do you want numbers or do you want relative rank? It's like, if our intuition was like, oh, is this like really, why, why is this ranked first? Like, is there something naively different about this method? Maybe there's not at all. It's like, yeah, this shows, different. this shows this thing, um, but with, um, like all, so this shows, this is represented more like a little bit more. So with clip, so like things like clip, and R3M um, and MV and like MVP uh, are shown here. So here you have R3M, which is like so I, for example. So the this is R3M. Yeah. So like on some of these, it's performed worse. It performs way worse on like on these like habitat data set. Yes. Um, yeah, time contrast, this is this thing, uh, time, it's like learning on video, I guess. So yeah. like, and you must, when you place, you have language data, you must have yeah. some I think the data set does, I, 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 yeah, yeah, it's multimodal training and then it like infers by using language, it like, um, like with, it's just probably photos, but like, yeah, the training of that model, it was probably yeah, it uses clip. Like I think that's why clip is another one. It's like it uses language to like infer more things, like get more data about it. Um, so it's not it's like none of this is supervised. So you don't have any like like this corresponds to this. Yeah. It has to learn all of this on its own and, and I think the language part kind of gives it hints of like what it should be thinking. So Yeah, so all of these are unsupervised learning methods. Action, the output of the RL model, yeah, the output of the is just like it, it, it depends on the it depends on the environment. For like image now, it's just like move forward, turn left, turn right, and then it's just like oh, how do you move forward with spot? Like how does spot move forward? Like what 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 controls do you have to do to do like forward walking dot dot gif? Uh, so we're there. Where like we can yeah. actually see the basic parts of a room, yeah, the basic parts of space, and we're here because we're fine tuning on like go get this fucking flashlight and bring it to me. Yes, yeah, yeah. A vector of like a hundred ray uh, image vector of your what you're currently looking at, and you predict like okay, go forward because like I see a door, so I'm gonna go through the door. Oh, there's a yeah. Okay. It does so I think it does some context. I think when they talk about it, when they talked about like train switching between I think it does some context switching between like, oh, this is like oh, it actually routes at this point. I think it might route between because like 
image nav only like navigates to a certain thing or a certain object. Yeah. So, so I think it yeah. combines it like context switch between like navigate, navigate to this, pick up this thing, pick up this like pick in place, and then place it. Yeah, so it's and like, then it switches between these different URL like yeah. fields. Yeah, all of the policies, okay. and then the output of the policy then is like it's it's only an output of the policy to interact with like the virtual world. So like with image nav, the output of the policy is move forward, turn left, turn right. Then you have to like convert that into like spot Absolutely. moving forward, Actually, spot yeah. moving left, spot moving, spot moving left, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's just saying about uh, oh about uh, yeah, it just says evaluate. It's just like evaluate for the benchmark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the RO part, the actual thing that like converts. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the, the task, the AI, the, so yeah, the, the ideas have like a core visual model, but like the thing that converts that, that information that the visual model gets to an action is, is a separate policy and it's different for each task, but it's, it's much smaller than, uh, so like it's much smaller and like easier training component than the actual visual understanding. It seems like navigation pick and place and another policy that's like which one of these are we doing? Yeah. And then another policy that's also like, oh shit, I don't know which one I'm doing because I'm in a new state that I don't really recognize. But like, okay, kind of bump it towards the one that makes most sense because it's yeah. like. Okay, so it's actually so what I was sort of thought you guys were saying context switching like an analogy or something, but you just really no between the three different RL sort of yeah. states. Navigate to the flashlight. Pick the flashlight and bring the flashlight into the back. Yeah, navigate to this other thing. Put down the flashlight. It sounds to me like like this the visual cortex stuff is not all the latest spot developments. No, it, it it is, but it's it's uh it's like the foundation on which this other stuff rests in order to be effective. Okay. Yeah. It's how like a a, a model can get yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the vision of it, like training and following those those switches between different modes, right? It's not like they're suggesting it's like doing planning or something, right? It's just sort of like they probably kind of given clear points where they're switching. I'm not sure, but yeah, no, it's is it is it just a space to evaluate the model? So like the, the yeah, this the visual the cortex was just evaluating. The VR, they, yeah. they choose the MVR, then they, then they 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 pick that one, and then they freeze. That and then they run on 17 tasks, whichever these different policies, to see which ones to see which ones perform the best for that model. Is that correct? Yeah, it performs. It, it they 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 take seven. I think they take seven tasks. They take seven like uh, they take a subset of the 17 like tasks they that they call that's like their cortex bench, and then they 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 have like. This different models, different like foundation models, and then they train a policy using those found like using like foundation model each of the seven tasks, uh, and then they just like compare them against each other. It's just like they just trained a bunch of models, trained a bunch of foundation models, trained a bunch of RL policies combined with those foundation models, and then like did a ranking of them compared to each other. The output of the study was what's the best, like MVR is the best. Use the MVR. MV, yeah, MVP is, policy. yeah, MVP is the best, um, and that's our, that's like our thing, which we call, which was Cortex-1. Yeah, the opposite of the study is for the original model, not for like yeah. the actual. This, this blog, this blog is, is saying like, where is, we have a visual Cortex model, that's the thing I went over in this paper, but then we also had um, on the side a way to bring this to real life. Like, this is, this blog is also talking about like on the side, in addition to doing VC one, they also did another. They had another effort with with Georgia Tech to actually bring this into the real world. So bring this like the effectiveness of this of VC one into the real world, and that's where you see like this the spot doing a bunch of stuff. Just like how performing 
anything that came before. Yeah, it's it's like near perfect in task and like in in terms of like navigating through the environment and retrieving stuff. You can just feel like that thing the adaptive scope was in It's the name of how it like translate it translated uh visual cortex one results into the real world. Also near perfect too. Yeah, but still, like, it still has to, like, navigate several things and... And navigate uh, houses it hasn't seen. Yeah. Or, like, it still has to train to, like, yeah. It still has to train to, like, do well. But, like, it still trains on this task, like, the simulation of, of the house. Um, but still, like, it still, like, does... It still learns. It's still just, just through, like, a tiny RL agent, like, through, like pure pure oil. Yeah. Um, Our part here is yeah. yeah, like it doesn't it doesn't have it it doesn't have this map. Like the hard part is it doesn't have this map at all. It like just knows that like when looking at a certain part, it's like it just sees that it's part of this it just learns through like it just it just like can it's learn right. like where yeah, it learns like where in the in the in the house it's looking at. Just through like some fine, like just through a few layers of of RL. This is a question I had. Yeah. When looking at the video, there's there are arrows on the floor. Is it is it using those or is it searching, seeking out like a stuffed animal? Oh shit! It's cheating. It's cheating. You can see there are multiple X's. The to be fair, there are multiple X's. I think I think it's a little. I think it's a little, I think what I see is like, it might be cheating. Yeah, it's hard to tell because like there are other X's, right? Yeah. It's cheating on the test for sure. You're right. It's a block. It's a stage block. It seems like X marks the spot that that's the landing point where, where you must, the robot must place. But it's not, yeah. There's not a little somewhere in that room where the X is there. But isn't it the camera on yeah, our Maybe that's. Maybe that's maybe that's the direct, the uh, actual instruction. Visually, it's it's chasing the arrows. Maybe that was how they did the instruction. yeah going. The, the instruction is like go to the X. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, and, you know, maybe not deception, but just reliability. People have read more papers than I do. What do you think in general about you know like when people release their own benchmark and the model with it, like. How big of a grain of salt do you think that? I mean, yeah, some of a grain of salt, but I think it's just like I think it's more an example of like how these labs are just developing, or like how how like big how like centralized AI has become is like all of these like incestuous developments of like oh here we're gonna like we're gonna like base it on based on these previous like five papers that we developed. We're going to use develop our in-house benchmark, which is a combination of several of our sims with other like big name sims, and then train our model on that. It's just like we have. It's just like AI has become super has become super centralized because, uh, like, just because of the resources required for it. And I think this is like stuff like this. The fact that a lot of these are like like oh VC one is based is like. Based on this Cortex bench, which is like an in-house thing. Release this one open source, right? Yeah, the VC one is open source, but like the training required and like like the ability to do all the training and all of the like the work, the research work done on it, and like the the like how to develop these um, developing these simulation environments, like this, like a lot of these, like these three are all Facebook. Uh, I don't actually, yeah, Meta World, obviously. Uh, so like four of these like general environments are Facebook, uh, yeah, but like yeah, the, the resources yeah. The code and the model weights like you can reevaluate it. So it's like open science, way more open than like opening eye. Sure. So like you yeah, can do it if you're actually interested in that, you can definitely. Yeah, you can definitely repurpose it. And one of my goals is to repurpose. I guess they already kind of beat me to it um, by doing with the adaptive still coordination, but I think it would be cool. Yeah. Number five. yeah. Uh, but I'm still, yeah, trying to get. The other part of your question was like, whenever you're doing foundational model stuff and you're you're just consuming every piece of data, like 
you're gonna have better performance in general. So it's just at, at the like large data scale, of which only large companies can do this, like and they can only cut it out of those. Yeah, you're in a weird spot. And that's like probably more often than not that they're right, but it's yeah, evaluating it's really difficult. They've got a good excuse. Yeah. That other large companies are probably checking them because they're trying to get better than them. And then they know, but they're not releasing that information. So, yeah, basically, it's just, I mean, if it was really bad, they would have an incentive to <laughs> like to put it out there. So, uh, there's Peninsula, uh, like Peninsula Deckard, Deckard agent, D E C sure. K A R D. I'm just gonna try to like analogize for a second, and hopefully this is fine. But like, something that's really interesting is like have the mechanical system, you have the robot, right? Which is like the mechanical system. It has fucking cameras, it has to like actuate, it's like a very complex oh, uh, complex uh, mechanical system, right? And then you have like the RL on top of it, which is fine tuning the mechanical system for like a narrower task. And then you have the foundation model, which is like, I get common sense, right? So like that's like the stack of that system that can operate in a physical environment. So right now I'm doing like very, 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 very basic reinforcement learning in Unreal Engine. And it's it's like weirdly similar. It's like you have the engine with like your player pod, and your player pod is your like mechanical system that can like navigate around this environment. And like the engine has like A star and all these other algorithms for like dealing with space, right? That's like very similar to like spot in the real world. And then I'm fine tuning it towards a behavior, but I'm really, like right now, I'm really frustrated that I ha it has no common sense, right? So when TJ was making uh, his virtual robot, he started doing imitation learning, like to give it common sense of yeah. the world that you're building, right? So like as a game designer, I'm like, damn, like I wish- Once you created Deckard, I, I think I like, when I search Deckard, it's, it's like, oh, like Blade Runner. ARD AI and put in like dreaming and LLM. Oh, yeah. Hyper realistic. <laughs> Unreal, yeah. <laughs> you put like high octane. High octane. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? I was literally. No, I know. <laughs> You're looking at users. Long 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 long. Long. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I found it. Can I send it to you? Here it is. Yeah, do, do embodied agents stream of pixelated sheep? Yeah, that's this. So, like, this guy is like, people are trying to get like common sense. Like, this foundation model is like trying to get like visual common sense. And people are like, how the fuck do we get common sense? And when this loads, this will show like another way that people were trying to get common sense in Minecraft, which was like, you would set a goal. And the goal is like get a diamond or whatever. But when the agent sleeps, when it's nighttime and it sleeps, it uses the LLM, which has all the like common knowledge on the internet to construct the task. And then it does RL in the daytime based on what the like LLM fed it in the nighttime. Yeah. Are you know what I'm saying? So like, what it constructs, like what to do for that day. Exactly. So it's like if I need to like go fucking, I don't know, like make a diamond or whatever, in the nighttime it's streaming, the LLM is like, how do you make a diamond? And then because it's like GPT-4 or whatever, it's like has bazillions of intuitions about that. Uh, 10,000 11 year olds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 10,000 11 year olds. And then like, so it constructs a preliminary task and then it like rolls through the time on how to like test it. So it's like, I'm, I'm jealous looking at this stuff as just like a random nerd because like, I don't have a foundation model like fuck you or like, you like give it to me or give us ones to use so that we can like right. build systems with bigger intuitions to like do more things. So the, the, the VC1 here is not common sense, it's just visual, visual recognition. Visual common sense. It's just object right. recognition almost. Like, it's, like, that, like foundational in that way, it's like takes the cortex part out of it, gives you really good primitives to then, you know, be like, yeah. okay, you know, describe this image kind of stuff. Like, then you can use language and you can do planning. Very small me like there. Common sense has a meaning in lacquers and LP stuff basically. It's like a well, language. in like in like 
AI and AGI common sense means like actually what this like what common knowledge that we have regardless of our like we have different languages, we have a common sense tool, which is similar to a language model. Linguistics and like cognitive science to say that's not actually yeah, the same it's... common sense. There's like there's like if I say something like uh, uh, if I if I trip with a bucket, what happened? Like is my leg wet? We could both say yes, and that's common sense, even though we've never seen or like put those things together or said that, but we could put those facts relative to the corpus inside of us, which constructs them. So there's so okay, so so when we talk about language with common sense. Like, another another way to think about it is like you if you look at an image, what it learns is like you have this giant like seven hundred you have like this like seven hundred dimensional vector. Um, so you output you take an image, you output a seven hundred dimensional vector. What does that dimension that vector do? Well, imagine you see like imagine someone told you to describe you're you're looking at a room and someone is telling you like on the phone is telling you to describe a room. You're like, oh, there's like a mural on the right and like in pastel colors, there's a ball hanging from the ceiling, there's some stairs toward the front of the room, um, and stuff like that. And like it it's essentially taking that description or like that high level description of the room as like a as like an encoding. Like the encoding the encoding serves to like do a high level description of the room. And because you're getting this like description of the room, like in description in description specifically of like important parts of the room, um, you can then use that you can then like more easily like, oh, there's a stair in the front. If I want to go downstairs, then I will go to the front of the room because I want to go downstairs. So it's kind of like under yeah, it's easy it like because it's more descriptive in it. It, it it takes like the key description or like just key like descriptive features of an environment uh, in its input and then act on that. It can then train you can train something to act on that more easily. Is that not like visual common sense? Yeah, basically, common sense. it's just like yeah. right, but like trains that into like personal and street language. Argue on our like Mari's perspective. I mean, let's say you see a video of someone sticking their leg in a bucket of water, and then afterwards you can tell that their leg is wet from the way it looks, right? I mean, maybe if that version is training on like the, the one that's informed by time, so it can actually say, oh, this frame, these frames, the leg went in the bucket, these frames, the leg is wet. That sort of has the same structure. Well, I think no, that, that, was using, that was using image. Well, there was some of a lot of techniques. It was using contrast and time to very close frames. Find the difference to then use that and then a just different like in, in the highest level like all all that's doing is finding a way to compress everything you could possibly see in all of history into a very small uh, numerical seven hundred vector space. To do that mathematically, like you have to you have to find similar patterns and then compress that into um, the space where you're losing information. More dimensions you have more information. You have to like compromise so that when I, you know, when I see a, a dog and a lion and I don't have enough vector space, they're going to know my look. And when I when I try to pull them back out, and I'm like, I have to pick like when I communicate, I'd be like, okay, I'm going down the stairwell, and I see a, I I express the lion dog vector point like some parody thing, you know, like like because I don't have the, the space to express that. So yeah, like yeah, like that's. Right. That's how I describe it. It's like you have to invent a new language that will express everything that you can see. And sometimes that might not be descriptive enough to think about. I would I would still call that I don't know, I still consider I I do consider it like a form of intuition because like what what is the purpose of this vision model? It's that when you see something before you or like when when the robot when the AI sees something or like observes a raw visual data, it comes in and it translates that to something more dense and it helps it it helps it uses it uses existing images and like observations of existing images to help better understand or like have a, a more like inform like have condense the image into pure information. Um, and I think that's sort of what 
we do whenever we see a gain in that. When we talk about it in the, in the real, in like human, in human talk, it's like I look at a game, and because the game designer is good, I can tell what I am supposed. To, I can tell that this like, and if I'm playing Mario, like that you're supposed to jump. You're supposed to like avoid the Goomba because the Goomba looks bad, and, and then you're supposed to hit the like golden block. Maybe and moments this is really loaded, but what you said like visual intuition, yeah, and it has some like visual intuition that the way I'm translating again like, out of math and into like it's kind of you can kind of think that the coin it's like I like but in in some ways like it, this it's just compression. So you can think yeah. of kind of like the JPEG standard, which takes like an image and compresses it and compresses it in a way that is like perceptual. So like it keeps the part that's relevant to our eyeballs and throws away the not important stuff. And yeah. one way you can think of that is boring compression. And another way you can think of that is like having the common sense to know that like it's not that interesting if like neighboring pixels have different colors. Yeah, in its most literal sense, mass autoencoding is basically just the the encoder decoder model is just like learning compression. Yeah, and it's With like compression with its the most literal of, sense. Like, every image that's ever been made, so you really have a good sense of like what's important. Yeah, I'm tr I, I, I'm thinking like from your mind, like a poet and like a linguist almost. Or it's like I guess you could say in a way it's common sense because like we both know that like when we say. When we're looking at a picture of an axe, like, like we could say the word axe, and that that is like a highly compressed thing that then we could convey in another way. So, like, yeah, in that sense, but in the more like, like practical, literal sense, just trying to like make it more sensible to mathematics to help drive like thinking about vectors and stuff. But yeah, if you're finding an intuition in a mathematical sense, it's a form of compression in a like in in a like non in a more like yeah. More like in a more yeah in another sense I think it's like intuition like yeah. I mean, in AI we're always gonna have those two sides where we describe how the thing is built and how it seems maybe like intelligence or human intelligence or something like that. right yeah um yeah we're at time yeah we're close to time but yeah I yeah it's I think it's well, I guess in conclusion, um, I think this is super, it's like, it's really amazing um, how, like, I do want, and yeah, it's really amazing how, like, how you can use visual represent, or like, representation learning, um, like, under using vision models to help with tasks, and yeah, I, I hope to, I have currently got it set up on the render box, I don't have a demo of it used on a on a new task yet um i've been trying to look at some of the habitat like environments myself um but i really want to at some point uh show this in action because it, yeah it's it's really it's really impressive like how much it it learns because like I've, I've learned firsthand that navigation like doing the navigation from room to room with visual input only is extremely hard um just because yeah it's a very hard task the fact that it can do they can show like a pretty good accuracy on that like a 60 50 to 60 percent um yeah it's it's a very impressive and and the fact that it can i think generalizability is always great in ai because it means you can it, it means it's like learned more i think you know ai is yeah yeah, it's learned more, or it's compressed more, and it has more, it can be more potent because a lot of AI struggles to, a lot of AI, you can train it to perform well on a specific data set, but it struggles outside of its, outside of its, like, realm. Uh, so having something that performs well across a variety of tasks means it can generalize, like, it means it can do even more, like, it's only it's it, you can even do even more things and like do even more broad like for example with the dog and the robot and like walking between things yeah i i hope to do more to talk more about like my practical experiences with this in the lightning round talk um and next week we'll go over like state of the art
if people want to know more about what happens in reinforcement learning um, on the reinforcement learning side, which I kind of like abstracted away, and I talked a lot about the like visual understanding. There is, if we do want to know more about reinforcement learning, um, we'll be talking more about that next week with um, advanced topics in reinforcement learning.